but if you don't want to spend a shed load on ocarinas and obviously you want something that is really good for sweet scent killing hordes then this is the guide for you What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Darku and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own living ocarina. And you're probably thinking, what is the living ocarina? What is that? And it is a smeargle or smurgle, or I don't know how you want to say it, but it's a smurgle and they're going to be learning all kinds of moves. They're going to be learning surf, teleport, fly and sweet scent. The first thing you'll want to check whilst doing this method is in your key items, whether or not you have the whale mer pail, which is a watering can. If you do not have the watering can, you need to come to root 104 below Rustboro Sea over here in Hoenn as you can see and you're just going to go in this flower shop and talk to the nice lady at the top with the yellow hair and she will give you the watering can. Now that you've got your watering can what you want to do is go to the battle frontier at the very bottom right of the map. If you have not got the battle frontier on the map it's because you haven't done like this part of the story yet so you need to complete all of Hoenn and then when you've done that you can go to Lilico Sea which is the top of the map and speak to the fairy lady here who you present your ticket to and you can go to the Battle Frontier. Once you come out of the Battle Frontier gates, you'll realize that there's like a nice little cave entrance here. This is the Smeargle Cave. What you'll want to do is just follow this route around. Obviously, you want to go in the PC first so that you can also fly back whenever you feel like it. This is where a load of people train uh, for EXP when they fight loads of tentacles. What I will do is pop a repel here. Now, you can't see mine because I've already sorted this out, but there will be a pseudo wudu stood right here where my mouse is, and you're going to have to use your watering can on the pseudo wudu that stood here, and then he'll fight you, and then you can now move along. Once you've done that, all you need to do is just surf straight down the waterfall and go all the way over to the cave over here. Hoping the rappel actually keeps us going the entire way, and it does pretty good. We've got some steps left over as well. So in here is where Smeargle is, and there's usually people shiny hunting Smeargle in here and using Payday with Meowth to get money. In this cave you'll literally come across loads of Smeargles. Now again, you don't even need a really good one, as you can see mine here is absolutely not good at all. If anything, it's garbage, right? But obviously you're going to use it literally just as an ocarina, so do not fear about catching any good or bad ones, you just want one. A quick tip before we start though, and I should have probably done this before we went in the cave, we're just going to fly back to the PC above us. What we're actually going to need is a Pokemon with Mean Look. Now you can go to your box and type in Mean Mean Look, and it'll actually come up with the first Mon that actually has Mean Look. So for me, it's this Gengar. Okay, so during this video, obviously, you know I'm going to go back down to this cave, but I'm going to do a quick edit. Obviously, I just wanted you to know that before we go out ahead, we actually have this Gengar, and he has Quick Claw on him because he's only a level 28, bless him, so he might not go first. He has Mean Look as well. And we're also bringing our catching Breloom with us. Now again, my Breloom isn't the most amazing Breloom ever, but it has False Swipe, Substitute Spore, and Stun Spore. We're just bringing in something that can easily lower the Smurgle without killing it. Alright, we're now back at the cave entrance. But before you follow the video and you go ahead and surf down here with a low-leveled thing, just remember that when you repel, uh, if you've got like a low-leveled Mon up front, you will still find Mons in the water. So obviously I kept Gengar very low on the list there and I kept my level 100 Luxury up front. What I'm going to do now is put my Gengar up front so he comes out first and we, he's got Quick Claw again just to mention just because he is level 28 so he could be slower than Smurgles in the cave. And we've also brought our True Swiper which is our Breloom who has False Swipe, Substitute Spore and Stun Spore. This is my really good catching Breloom so that's what we're going to be bringing to the cave. Alright, so the first Smurgle pops up. Again, it doesn't matter if this Smurgle is really good or really bad in IVs, we are not going to be using it as a fighting Mon. First thing we're going to do is use Mean Look, and as you can see, Quick Claw made us go first. If that didn't happen and you go second, just remember that Smurgle doesn't sketch your move because it only has one PP, so it'll struggle to death if, if you don't go first. We're now going to switch to our True Swiper before he Mean Looks. And we're going to try and lower him a bit. Now Mean Look only has 5 PP, so just be aware of that, so he will start lowering himself. Now we can't escape. We've got Toxic Orb because we uh, heal from Poison on our Breloom. We're just going to give him a quick false swipe, and then we're going to put him to sleep. And then we're going to try and throw a ball at him. If there's viewers out there who also have a catching uh, Breloom, such as myself, and you're wondering why I have Spore and Stun Spore, it's because some Mons don't go to sleep, and some Mons don't uh, stun, so obviously... Switching them out is the best, and if you think Breloom's going to die fast, use Stun Spore so that it always is paralyzed rather than trying to spore and only sleeping for about 3 turns. 
So now he's asleep and very, very low. We're just going to use a repeat ball. This is one of my favorite balls because we've already caught a Smurgle before. This will have a great catch rate. And there we go. Actually, first try when we caught it. Smurgle was caught and uh, transferred to box one. It came out as quirky. Ivy's on it again. Well, they're, they're not too bad, but again, these do not matter at all. And it should have mean look immediately because you use mean look on it to catch it originally. Okay, so now we have our new Smurgle out and you can see it already has mean look. Once you've done this, you want to go to this grey haired man in the Pokey Center. These will be in the Pokemon Center. You'll always, you'll always see a colored haired dude and a grey haired dude. This is the move mechanic right here, so you want to relearn a move on the new Smurgle. I'm just going to try and move this out of the way for you. And it can only learn Sketch. Now, the reason why we're doing this afterwards, right, is because we... Okay, so for a start, it needs two heart scales, and I'll show you where to get those in just a moment if you do not know. But yeah, anyway, the reason why we're doing this one by one, and I'll explain now. So we're going to learn move, and we're going to put it next to Mean Look. And it'll cost two heart scales. We do have heart scales, so we can just do that. Now, we're only going to do it one at a time. And the reason for this is, if you speak to him again and try and learn another sketch, it will not let you. You can only have one sketch per time. Now, if you're looking for heart scales, the absolute best way of doing this is to find a love disc. So if we type in love disc on our Pokédex, again, the Pokédex, ladies and gents, is absolutely amazing on this game. If we go to Pokédex and we go to wild locations, it has actually been updated recently. There's way more places that love disc spawns now, and you'll use like all kinds of rods and all kinds of uh, routes to find one. My favorite place to go is Evergrande City, which is under the Pokémon League in Hoenn. Now you'll realize here, look, Super Rod, Hoenn, Evergrande City, 3040, very common if you use the Super Rod, so that's what we'll be doing. The best way to tell if a love disc actually has an item, loads of people use Bennett, but the real chads use Goffertel. My Goffertel here actually has Frisk, the ability Frisk, so the Pokemon can check a foe's held item, and it also has Thief as a move. So we're just going to put Goffertel up front, and I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, there we go, so Goffertel has also frisked the Love Disc. That will only happen if Love Disc is actually holding an item, and it will pop up and Frisk will show you. Now we're going to go ahead and use Thief, and then Blamo. It will hand us the item, and you'll see on Goffertel now, I actually have a Heart Scale on Goffertel. You can either kill this, catch it, or you can run away, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And then from there on, you'll keep the Heart Scale, so you just want to remove and go again and again and again if that's something you want. If you do not have Super Rod, all you need to go is up here to Moss Deep City. And then when in Moss Deep City, you'll have to take this route here. We'll just quickly show you. This was quicker in my mind. And in here should be a fisherman who gives you the Super Rod in Hoenn. If you don't want to constantly fish for heart scales and you just you have some money but you just can't be bothered to do it yourself, you could always go to the GTL item listing and type in heart scale. And you can search by price. You can either click here and click lowest price, or you can click on price and it'll sort it by price. And you'll notice they go for about 3,000 per one. So you can farm them and sell them if you want, or if you're just interested in buying some, that's how you do it. If you just don't want to waste any time and you just want you to get your grubby hands on some heart scales. So our next step here then is to actually get teleport on our Smurgle. So well, the first thing I did there was I typed in Abra in the Pokédex, and as you can see here, and we'll go to Wild Locations, and you can see uh, down here in the grass in Hoenn, Route 116, it can be around level 7, and it's uncommon. That's as common as it's going to get though. So we're going to search around here with our Smurgle up front uh, to try and find an Abra. There we go, we finally found Nabra. This has got to be like the seventh encounter, I believe. It wasn't the quickest thing to find, but it was uncommon on the list, as you've seen. And we know exactly what Abra does. It's one move, so we're going to mean look it first. There we go, so that's now mean look, so it can no longer escape. It's going to try and teleport away, but as you see, it failed. Now we're going to go ahead and sketch it. So now we have sketched teleport. Very poggers, I know. And now we're going to just run away because we actually do keep the move if you run away. So as you can see, we've now got Mean Look and Teleport. The idea of having Mean Look, though, was to get Teleport. Mean Look will actually we get rid of later on. Okay, so now we're going to teach Smurgle another move, which is actually kind of annoying. We're going to get rid of the annoying ones first. So Teleport, in my opinion, was the most annoying to get rid of. And now we're going to teach it Fly. Obviously, you want to go back to the Pokemon Center and make sure you've got another sketch once again. But in order to do Fly, what we're actually going to do is use a Pidgey right here. We've literally got a level 9 Pidgey, and it's called Fly Only. And it's because I've made it lose its moves, which was like, like Sand Attack and Tackle or whatever. 
Uh, if you want to lose moves, you need to actually go to Lily Cove City. And in Lily Cove City, there's a, guard, a move deleter just a, like at the top of that city. The idea is we're going to use Fly only here, who only has Fly, he's a very low level, so he'll copy the stats and it'll be a terrible ditto, essentially. Uh, what we're going to do is actually lead with something like my Luxray. And this is because we obviously don't want to like walk into something we can't fight, etc. So we're going to lead with Luxray, and that's a great idea, okay. And then if we find a Ditto, what we're going to do is switch into our Pidgey, and the Ditto will use Transform to have our Pidgey, which will only have Fly. Once then we have Fly, uh, uh, sorry, the, when, once then the Ditto is my Pidgey and only has Fly, what we'll do is send out our Smeargle, and we're, we don't have to do this, but I want to guarantee I move second, because I only have one Sketch PP, and I'm going to put a lagging tail on my Smeargle, so he definitely goes second. Because the only way to Sketch Fly is if when they've landed, they then you Sketch it. So that is exactly what we're going to try and do. I'll now put it into motion so you can see how that happens. As we'll go in, this is literally known as Diglett Cave, and I'm not going to lie, we're on channel 1 as well, so there's going to be a lot of people in here. Yep, there we go. So what we're going to do is go left and right, left and right, until we find a Ditto of choice. Now again, it doesn't have to be the best Ditto, it doesn't have to be the worst Ditto. There will be like Loudred, etc. in this cave as well, sometimes, it's not all the time. But as you can see, we found a Ditto literally straight away. So again, I'll put the plan into action, and I'll slowly talk through the steps so that you don't miss out. So again, we've sent out Luxray, but he's going to use Transform straight away. We're going to go to Fly Only, which is our Pidgey. Once again, like I said, he has literally just Fly, and that's all he has. So he's now transformed into my Pidgey. Now we're going to switch back over to our Smeargle, who we're trying to make as a living Ocarina, and he'll fly up in the sky. Providing we definitely go second here, he's already in the air, we can actually go ahead and use Sketch because he'll come down and hit me first and then we'll Sketch it. As you can see, he's hit me with Fly and I'm now Sketching Fly. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we get Fly and our own Smeargle and we can just now run away. As you can see, Lagging Tail, pretty poggers. We're going to keep the Lagging Tail on Smeargle for now because we're going to get the other moves. Now because we didn't actually kill or catch the Ditto, our Fly Only didn't level up, so it didn't learn any new moves. If your Fly Only learns more moves, you best hope that you properly sketch on pinpoint, or you go back to the move deleter and get rid of the moves. Okay, so now we're back at the Battle Frontier with our Smeargle, who has another sketch, because we've once again gone into the PC and got sketch off of the guy with the grey hair. Obviously I skipped that in the edit so that you don't have to watch every single step, you you know what you're doing by now. So we're going to keep our Smeargle out with Lagging Tail, and we've just whipped out a, for me anyway, a Staryu who has Surf, and we've put Quick Claw on so we make sure we can go first or at least try to go first, and we're going to surf, and let the Smeargle in the caves sketch our surf, and then we're going to switch to our Smeargle and sketch it back. Now I'll put that plan into action so you can see how that works. So here we go, hopefully we don't need Quick Claw, but if, it, if we do need it, hopefully it does actually proc. If it doesn't, it'll be like obviously a good sort of example of how this can happen. But yeah, there we go, Quick Claw lets it go first, we're surfing. And obviously our Staryu, just to clarify, is not a high level, so we can definitely not kill it. And as you can see, that Smeargle has now sketched our Surf. We're now going to switch to our Smeargle, who is going to get hit by Surf. We've also got Lagging Tail to make sure we can get hit by it again before we sketch it. This shouldn't do too much damage at all. There we go, and we're just going to sketch that back. Obviously we have Lagging Tail, so we attack again second, so we definitely have the move he's about to use. We're going to just sketch that now, and you'll see that we now have Surf. We're now going to run away and we can't escape, that's pretty good that. Great example in the video of how that works, uh, but ooh, that's fine, we're fine. What I'm going to do is just switch to a higher level, obviously it's based on like speed etc and lagging tail is no bueno for speed, obviously. I'm going to take one more surf and then we're just going to run away, like so. Now we're going to do one more time, oh my gosh get me out of the cave, one more time we're going to go back to, we're just going to fly literally above our own heads here and make sure that we get rid of mean look as one of our moves here when we speak to the grey head man. So here we go, we're going to click on Smeargle, make sure we learn Sketch, and we're going to get rid of Mean Look. And we're going to use two more heart scales for that as well. Alright, so the only thing to complete this now, we're going to actually bring our Luxray back up front. We actually have a Sweetie, with his, which is a Tropius. Uh, it's a very high level actually, so it should be faster anyway. I don't need Quick Claw on this. However, if you've got a low-leveled Sweet Scent Mon, I would highly recommend putting a Quick Claw on it. 
Uh, when we go in the cave, we're going to put Sweetie up front, and then we're going to use Sweet Scent straight away. Let the enemy Smurgle sketch it. Then we're going to switch to our Smurgle and sketch it back, just like we did with Surf. And that should honestly finish off our Smurgle. Alright, so here we go, back up the front of the cave. We've got our Tropius up front. Again, has many moves. It's basically a HM slave as well. But we're going to go in here and make sure that we've got the Sweet Scent at the ready. So now we found a Smurgle, we're going to send out our Sweetie, as I said, which is our Tropius. Again, if you have a low leveled Mon with Sweet Scent, you want Quick Claw to be put on them. Obviously, my Tropius is 85, it's fine. Should go faster. There we go. So we're going to use Sweet Scent on the enemy Smurgle, just like I said before. Uh, evasiveness fell, which is great, right? So we're going to sketch it off of us. Now it has Sweet Scent, and now we're going to switch to our Smeargle, and we're going to get hit by Sweet Scent. We still have Lagging Tail, so we're going to get hit by Sweet Scent twice, in fact, but that really doesn't matter. We are just going to make sure we can absolutely sketch this with no problems. There we go, Sweet Scenting me one more time, and the same move here. Evasiveness fail, doesn't matter, we're sketching it. And now you'll see that our Living Ocarina, our Smurgle here, now has Sweet Scent, Teleport, Fly and Surf. We can also now run away. Sometimes again the lagging tail will be make you so slow that you can't run away. You just want to switch to a better Mon and then run away. But as you can see, ladies and gents, we're just going to change the Pokeball because I love changing the Pokeball on stuff that I love. Like so. And we're going to nickname it as well Ocarina. And there you go, there is your living ocarina. I hope this video was very informative and helps any of you out there who need to know this information, but if you don't want to spend a shed load on ocarinas, and obviously you want something that is really good for sweet scent killing hordes, then this is the guide for you. So again, sweet scent, so you can uh, get hordes of Pokemon, so you can hit them all at once and get loads of XP and EVs and etc. Teleport so you can go straight to the Pokemon Center, I'll, I'll describe it to you, I'll, I'll even just show you right now visually. It'll take you straight to the Pokemon Center like that, and you can heal straight away, so you can run back out and Sweet Scent away as much as you want. Fly obviously really good, and Surf because most of the time, like I said at the start of this video, you'll see people XP training or like IV, uh, EV training, sorry, by surfing on this, and then obviously our Spectac, this guy's probably got a Tentacruel Horde, yeah, like so, and then you'll kill them and you get loads of XP. So again, there, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this helped you. Uh, if it did, please leave a like and maybe even leave a comment. Maybe there's something you want to see in future videos that you want to learn about and that I have the knowledge about. But yeah, I hope this helped and I'll see you on another video. Goodbye! Just as some ending notes, if you don't want to go through all this hard work and you just want to buy one of these, you'll find stuff like Catching Smurgles and Ocarina Smurgles around 200 to 300k on the market. You'll see this guy right here, he's got False Swipe, Soak, Sweet Scent and Spore. That's for catching like any, literally anything. You can soak like ghost types and stuff so you can hit them with False Swipe. So again, if you're trying to find a Catching Smurgle or a proper like Ocarina Smurgle, around 2 to 300k you'll find those kind of Smurgles. Okay, now we're back at the Smurgle Cave at the Battle Frontier. That just scared the life out of me. I wasn't expecting another sub whilst I'm recording offline. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. So now Pidgey will have only Fly, and now they've transformed into me, which also, like I said, only has Fly. We're just going to try and skip a turn. Pokeball. It'd be a funny Pokeball if it works, but we're just going to waste a turn here. Let Fly only actually perish. No way. Are you joking me? Okay, I'm not gonna lie guys, that was not planned at all, and the chances of that getting in the ball are actually ridiculous. That is honestly so dumb. That is not what I was supposed to do at all. I was actually just gonna waste the turn, because the Pokeball was no way gonna catch that. Oh my goodness. Nice, level 7. <laughs> no, don't learn moves! No! Okay, well, <clears throat> that's uh, that's not great. That's not great. I should have probably seen that coming.